when doing simple extractions like we're doing here on these incisors, that technique right there where you're wiggling the luxator elevator down in between the tooth and the bone is where we're actually doing luxation, where that fairly sharp luxator elevator is placed into that space with apical force with a wiggling motion. Then what we're doing now is we're just holding that and you'll see that wiggle again. We're holding that for 15 seconds and putting continual force with torque and movement toward the tooth uh, with the whole shaft of that luxator elevator in an elevation technique. So luxator is getting that into the space like we're doing here with short quick movements and apical force and then now we're using the torque and hold and continual pressure portion of that technique which is called elevation to loosen the periodontal ligament fibers or stretch those compress the bone against the instrument itself and the other side opposite the instrument to expand that bone a bit so we create a larger space in order to use our extraction forceps to get those out of there. So this is this is in real time. So we're we're doing this on several teeth here in the mandible. And it's best to do all to the point where you feel that they're ready to be extracted with the forceps. Uh, instead of switching instruments back and forth. So in other words, don't do just one tooth. Uh, do all teeth with the luxator elevator. Go on both sides, mesial and distal. Uh, these are flat teeth, uh, so you can get pretty good purchase on the mesial and distal aspect. And then once they're all fairly loose, then you can change instruments. Then you can use your extraction forceps to get these out. Now. Uh, contrasting this with surgical extractions, we don't have to do this as much, uh, especially from the luxation standpoint because we're creating the groove surgically with our burr that we're creating with the luxation portion of this technique. So we do this to a certain extent and we do the elevation portion uh, more but not to the extent that we need to do with these simple extractions because there's no bone removal. We haven't removed any bone. <clears throat> so this is carried on until we're comfortable that that tooth is moving uh, enough where we can place those forceps on the tooth to remove it. Uh, the crowns on these, as you notice, have been worn down and so it'll be a little bit more difficult to grasp those with the extraction forceps <clears throat> just because of that. But what we want to try to do is get down maybe even a little bit below the gum line when we get to that point and grasp the cusp at the neck or a little below. And then that movement is mainly pull with a little bit of torque. So <clears throat> like kind of like a cork in a wine bottle. If you twist it too much, it's going to shatter that cork or fragment that cork. But if you pull mostly and turn a little bit, that cork will come out fairly readily. So again, we're watching this in real time. <clears throat> and these are fairly solid. They're in a fairly large dog. So they're taking a little bit more time than normal to elevate, but you just want to get them to the point where they are mobile enough to put those extraction forceps on. And the question becomes, well, how much, how much force is that? And that's all relative to the size of the, the, the patient. The larger the patient, the more the force. Uh, but you can also fracture teeth as well. You can see how flat that tooth is there can fracture teeth, so you need to gauge that based on your experience.